Hey besties and welcome to the second part of the drunk challenge. Some warnings. The video contains cursing and portrayals of characters being drunk. There are also triggering topics such as attempted kidnapping featured in the video thus viewer discretion is advised. If you've made it this far hope you'll enjoy the episode. Lev Haber was always an awkward person, though it may not have been evident because of his nearly extroverted nature the beanpole does have his moments of awkwardness. One of his fondest memories of him being in such a situation was his lousy attempt at confessing to Yaku during the older's graduation. He'd initially decided against it but with a little push from his senpai Skiru and Kenma the Kohei was swayed to try it out. Flashback. Graduation day. Metropolitan Nakoma High School year 2012. Are you sure this is going to work Kenma-san? I dunno. Lev then gave him a confused stare which caused the setter to look back at him confused. What? You told me that there's a high chance it'll work. I never told you that. It was Kuro who said it. Yeah but you agreed to it. You can't prove it Beanpole. Ah you're supposed to encourage me Kenma-san. Woo go Lev you're going to do great and you won't get rejected at all. Wow. The worst he can do is say no with his reason being you guys are still young and he's not ready for a relationship. TCH not ready my ass I even caught him drawing a heart over Lev's picture. The setter whispered to himself. As the duo waited for Kuro and Yaku to finish their businesses. Did you say something Kenma-san? No. Okay. Oh. They're coming. Are you ready to do it? Why yeah. Ah ready. You don't look like it but whatever. Hey. Lev. Kenma. You guys came. Congrats you too. Thanks. Hey thanks man. The libero exclaimed as he gave both the setter and aspiring ace a hug. Lev, who was caught off guard by his teammate's action suddenly turned red as he tried to awkwardly return the hug Yaku gave to him. Kiru and Kenma on the other hand exchanged smirks as they watched the beanpole gay panicking. Are you okay Lev? Why is your face suddenly red? Ah, ehh haha -ha, it's p probably just the weather haha. -ha. Okay. An awkward silence then engulfed the group. However it was then interrupted by Kenma who cleared his throat trying to signal Lev about his intentions. The beanpole however wasn't sure what it meant and instead stood awkwardly right in front of Yaku. I believe you have something to tell Yakun. Right Lev? Oh. Right he so sorry. See congrats by the way Yaku-san. For you know graduating he. Kenma then looked at Kiru who was also trying his best to hide the cringe he was feeling from the sheer awkwardness of the situation. It was however cut short when he noticed the setter looking straight at him. Oh why yeah another thing he. Am um, I. Found this. Lodged in your locker. S seems L like an important L letter. Oh. Med it's probably from the girl in class 3. I already told her I didn't feel the same way but I guess she still doesn't want to give up. EA. You can keep it if you want to. Oh haha why yeah it's probably from that girl and not someone you know haha. Come on. Let's go. Coach Nakomata organized a little farewell party for us in the third year classrooms. The libero smiled before slowly walking towards the stairs with Kiru following behind. Lev on the other hand stood there a little dumbfounded on what had just happened. Kenma on the other hand looked at him sadly. Though the setter wouldn't admit it he did feel a little bad for Lev. They have an arisen in the party? Kenma awkwardly smiled before slowly patting Lev's back in an attempt to console the middle blocker. You'll get him next time. Come on everyone in the club is waiting for us to arrive. The former middle blocker then sat up from his bed and placed his hands on his face, trying to block out that memory from his brain. He was currently having a crisis. For starters, the last time he tried to get closer to Yaku his plan had failed and now the next time he tried doing it through a text message no reply showed up. Although the second attempt may have been a small mistake on his part for not knowing that he was texting an old number. It however did not remove the anxiety that Lev was feeling right now. Kenma-san's going to handle it right. He told himself, trying to reassure that this time around he won't fuck up on his attempts at trying to swoon Yaku. However that brief period of calmness yet again vanished into thin air after realizing the extra thing he had to do for the challenge. The model then scrolled through the chat logs of their group chat once more, rereading everything that pertained to the challenge and made sure of what he had to do. I have to take my shirt off while acting drunk. He told himself, it didn't calm the beanpole in the slightest and caused him to become a flustered mess in the privacy of his room. He couldn't help but fantasize about the possible scenarios that might happen if he starts undressing in front of his crush. Private messages between Kenma Kozum and Lev Haber. Kenma San. I don't think I can do the challenge. Loudly crying face. I mean I don't really care, but this is tender we're talking about that guy's freaky. Can't you just tell him to cut me some slack loudly crying face? I would, but I kinda wanna see you embarrass yourself in front of Yaku. JKSNJKDLJS what if we end up doing IT loudly crying face? I thought you wanted that. KSJNDKSDLK no I do not. Neutral face. Okay maybe not now but soon. Calm down you're not going to do the deed just by taking your shirt off you know. But what if, you know. Question mark. What if it does happen and, Yaku-san doesn't like it. All why am I having perverted thoughts of Yaku-san loudly crying face? That's your problem not mine. Anyways you got a plan on how you're going to do the challenge? No distraught face with tightly closed eyes. 
Well you're in luck I was just about to tell everyone in the group chat my plan. Wait what? You'll find out soon enough. In the we love to spike volleyballs now group chat. Which one of y'all changed the group chat name? Skull. Yamamoto. Bitch it literally says Fukunaga Shohei changed the chat name. Now it was you. You just changed your nickname to make it look like it was me. Well. Is everyone online? Kenken? I thought you were streaming in an hour. Shouldn't you be getting ready by now? I finished getting ready already dad you don't have to worry about it. I. Yep he still acts like Kenma's dad alright. Yeah he does. I'm just looking out for him that's all. Y'all really call a caring friend someone's dad smh. What so he calls you daddy or something? I. Smirking face. Yamamoto shut the fuck up. Anyways are you guys up for a party this weekend? Someone said party. Who are what kind of party? Is it a costume party? Eyes. No. But I guess you can show up in a costume if you want. Wait. Where are you holding this party exactly? That's what I wanna ask you guys. Huh? I know someone who can let us rent a mansion for a night. It has a pool, an arcade and shit you can imagine. While that might be exciting I don't think our pockets can afford paying for that skull. True. Ah to be rich is only a dream for the common folk. Who said you were going to pay for anything? Hey, I'm the one who invited you guys I'll take care of the expenses. The only thing you guys need to do is show up and enjoy the party. Hey, Kenma-san don't you think it's a bit too much? I mean renting a mansion would cost a lot of money, you know. We can't let you spend a lot of it just for us grinning face with smiling eyes and sweat drop. I dunno, the pool and arcade sounds tempting. You guys don't really have to worry about anything I promise. Kenma, are you sure about this? He, is there anything we can do for you in return at least? I kinda feel a little guilty indulging in this activity knowing I didn't return a favor for you. Yeah what Kaisan said. Is there anything we can do for you? Food? Drinks that we should bring? You can bring any food or drink you want to share I guess. Oh and that Yakumura suit has to come. Eh? Why? Just cause. Question mark. That's not really answering my question Kenma Kun. Why not Yakusan? It's been a long time since the volleyball club met up I think it'd be nice to just relax for a little while and enjoy our little get together. I mean, as much as I would want to. At everyone please help me convince Yakusan to come. No really. I want to come but. UHH. Well. Plane tickets aren't really that easy to get a hold of. I'll pay for your ticket. Whoa whoa wait what? Don't worry Yakun I'll pick you up from the airport when you arrive. I'll come with Kiru to help you with your bags as well. Hold on wait what? See. Everything is solved. Wait but. Please Yakusan face with big pleading eyes. How can you say no to a face like that Yakusan face with big pleading eyes? I. Alright alright fine I'll try and clear out my schedule this week just for you Kenma. And Lev. I. JK thanks Yakusan it means a lot smiling face. But that doesn't mean that there probably won't be any last minute pop ups that might delay everything so don't get your hopes up. Well then I guess that's solved. I'll send the details in a bit after I finish streaming. See you on Saturday everyone. Good luck with your stream. Thanks. Kenma Kozum is a flying. Private messages between Kenma Kozum and Lev Haber. Didn't think you'd have the guts to convince Yakusan with your face with big pleading eyes. Emoji. Stop Diefkek it was a moment of impulse. Well at least it convinced Yaku to come. He didn't seem sure about it though Skull. What if he ends up cancelling last minute? Don't worry he won't. Why are you so sure about that straight mouthed face with one raised eyebrow? Just a hunch that's all. Anyways stream's about to start see you later bitch. Kenma Kozum is a flying. Wow. Saturday night. Nakoma Volleyball Club Reunion Party. Holy shit Kenken when you said mansion I thought you meant a small house and a pool. That doesn't really fit the archetype of a mansion. Ark what? Never mind. Okay. He's trying to tell you that you're an idiot for thinking a mansion is going to look like a small house Torah. I hey cut me some slack you bitches. To be fair I haven't even been inside a mansion before. Alright alright you guys can stop bickering now. Tamahiko kun do you or do you not think that a mansion can look like a small house? A mansion is a large house by definition Torah san. Torah san trying to prove you're right will just expose how clueless you are beaming face with smiling eyes. I y'all are mean today what the fuck. Oh shit is that an arcade machine. Inuoko exclaimed before running into the mansion's gaming area. The place was covered with lots of bright neon lights that made the atmosphere look like an actual arcade with machines containing different games covering the space of the entire arcade. Inuoka, who was just as fascinated with video games, ran inside the arcade and looked around excitedly at its interior like a kid in a candy store. Shibayama. Look, they have an arcade machine for Tekken. Wait where? Oh my god this is heaven. Welcome to the gaming corner, I guess. They have a snack bar. I'm going to check out the fridge. Ah uh, hold on fukunaga san there might be hidden charges if we try to eat. And he's gone. Don't worry Toshiro-kun. Those things are complimentary. Probably. Anyways why don't you guys enjoy the arcade while we wait for the others to arrive. Do you know where they are Kenma-san? Kuro, Lev and Kai-san are arriving later. They are going to pick Yaku-san up from the airport and drive him here. For now though how about we enjoy the arcade. Yo there's a shit ton of snacks in the fridge you gotta see this Toshiro-kun. Make sure you don't eat too much fukunaga we still have dinner later. Can't promise that Ken can cross-eyed grinning face with stuck out tongue.
Tokyo International Airport. Yakin just texted he said he's coming in a bit. Lev, you're looking a little nervous. Is there something wrong? Aye ha ha uhh it's nothing kaisan ha ha. Are you trying to make yourself look attractive to Yaku? Smirking face. And no. Called it. Ha ha I'm guessing you still have that little crush on him ha? Huh? Ha. Huh. How did you know about that kaisan? Question mark. Doesn't everyone in the Nakoma Volleyball Club know? Except Yaku of course. I know right. How were we able to detect it but Yakin couldn't? W wait I never told anyone except Kenma san about it. It was kind of obvious from the way you'd behave when you were around him. Yep and it didn't take long for a lot of us to realize it's smirking face. I so you're telling me you knew all this time. It's kind of an open secret within the club. But the what do you mean ha? Huh? Look alive everyone Yaku's coming. Especially you Lev Kun smirking face. Make sure you woo him with that suit and tie of yours. Kiru san. Hey guys. Yakun. It's nice to see you again. I said with a smile and proceeded to give Yaku a small hug. Lev. H hi Yaku san grinning face with smiling eyes and sweat drop. Wait. Is the party a formal one or? Nah Lev's just dressing up so he can try to impa. I just came from a shoot that's all he. I didn't want to change back into my casual clothes since there wasn't any time for me to do that so yeah he. Shree. Oh. Well you got a nice outfit there bud. Ah ha ha d do you like it? Yeah it fits you a lot gives you a kind of sophisticated look. That is he means that you look hot Lev smirking face. EA. Yaku who did not expect the sudden remark from the rooster head immediately turned red and proceeded to smack Kiru which earned a laugh from the former captain. Alright alright stop smacking me you gremlin. What the fuck did you just call me? Jeez calm down we're in an airport people are staring at you. Alright alright enough pleasantries you guys Kenma and the others are waiting for us back at the mansion. Wait he actually rented a fucking mansion. Oh you gotta see the whole place it's crazy Yakin. It's Kenma we're talking about here Yakin are we really surprised? True. Bro the bathroom here looks sick. And it has air conditioning. I love how you're snooping around the place and the first thing you're amazed at is the bathroom. Oh come on just look at the place. There's a bathtub, a shower, that thing you use to wash your butt with after you poop. And a view of the beach outside? Wait what the fuck there's a private beach. What are you two doing here? Kenma. You didn't tell me that this rental has a private beach. Oh yeah it does haha. That's where we'll have dinner later. I. I'm taking a dive in the ocean what the. No one's stopping you. Oh I wait for me Shohei. The two then ran off excitedly leaving Kenma behind. The former setter chuckled to himself as he saw the two boys running excitedly towards the beach. Kenma sighed before preparing himself to go back when a sudden ring of the doorbell alerted him of the upcoming guests to the party. Without a second thought the former setter proceeded to the front door to greet them. Kenma holy shit how much did it cost you to rent this place? What happened to hello? How are you? Kiru chuckled when the former setter said that phrase causing the others to do the same. I mean it's Kenma san yaku san you shouldn't be surprised. What's with the outfit Lev? He said that he came from a shoot and didn't want to change back into his original clothes. The former setter then looked at the beanpole and gave him a suspicious look in which Lev reciprocated by chuckling nervously. Why you know Yaku-san just came from a flight I think he should sit down for a bit right? Hehe. <laughs> Where are the others Kenma-kun? Ah right. Tashiro, Inoka and Shibayama are in the arcade while Yamamoto and Fukunaga are at the beach. Excuse me, did you say a beach? Yeah this place has a private beach at the back. That's where we'll eat dinner later. I how the. That's what I kept asking when we first arrived. Yaku-san do you need me to get you anything? Snacks? Water? Ha? Huh? Oh no thank you I'm okay. I'm going to the beach. Does anyone want to come? Right behind you. The two then left leaving behind Lev, Kenma and Yaku in the living room area, the libero still in shock of his surroundings. You guys wanna take a stroll around the mansion? Everyone else already finished looking around the place while you were gone. I wanna know where my room is. Oh right you still have bags with you come on let's get you to your shared bedroom. Wait, who's Yaku-san sharing the bedroom with? You? Ha. Huh? Is there a problem with that Lev? And no and not at all I, I was J just worried you know hehe. <laughs> worried? About what? Oh okay I get you if you're uncomfortable with that I'll try and ask the others if they wanna swap beds. And no that's not what I meant. I I W was just worried why you know. W what if I make why you uncomfortable grinning face with smiling eyes and sweat drop. Huh? I I P promised T to be on my best behavior W while are rooming with you Yaku-san. I won't let you down. Calm down Jamal you're acting weird. We're just going to be roommates for a night. Grinning face with smiling eyes and sweat drop. H here let me help you with your bags then. Whoa the beach looks so cool. Is that Yamamoto-san? Yeah. They found out about the beach and started running towards it like little kids earlier. Damn I kinda wanna take a dip as well. Me too. Can't blame you for that to be honest the sunset looks so cool. You guys can do that stuff later. The food's already here. What's up party people? Look at what Kai Kun caught while we were taking a small boat ride. Kenma and the others then huddled around and saw Kai holding a large fish which did not fail in freaking Lev out. The others who were watching the scene unfold couldn't hold their laughter when they saw Lev's reaction to the fish. PFFT Lev, don't tell me you're scared of fish. I'm not. It's just. The fish started moving okay I thought it was going to slap me across the face. How did you get on a boat? 
A we raised up a bunch of local fishermen in the area. They were nice enough to let us ride the boat and keep the fish they helped us catch. Well I guess I may have also slipped in a small payment for their nice gesture. Anyways we're planning on making sashimi with this thing are y'all up for that? Yo. What's going on people? Whoa that thing's huge. Kiru and Kaisan caught a big fish and they're planning on making sashimi with it. Oh pod. Why are you using Twitch lingo? That's what I was about to say. What's wrong with saying pod? Nothing just don't say it ever again Tora. Question mark. Anyways. Dinner's already prepared so I think it's time we start eating. You can give the fish to the waiter Kiro they told me they'll handle the sashimi. Roger that Kenken. Semi Shira. As someone who would call himself a performer it wasn't unusual for Semi Eater to find himself doing small time gigs in various bars and entertainment hubs. Because of this it was only natural for the Ash Blonde to be exposed to things such as alcohol. However, even with his adequate experience in handling alcohol the challenge that his friend had suggested in their peculiar group chat would once again prove to become a headache for the Ash Blonde. His face staring directly at the ceiling of his room, thinking about how he could pull off the challenge with the least amount of embarrassment from Shirabu. Think of it as how you would write a song eater. He told himself, though it was weird at first he thought why not give it a try. I need lyrics, harmony and rhythm primarily um. Maybe that was it? He thought to himself, his lyrics would be what he would tell Shirabu if he was drunk. The harmony of his song would be the ambience of the situation he would be putting Shirabu in and his rhythm would be the way he'd perfectly time everything in his plan until everything fit into place. Now that his outlining of the challenge was over the Ash Blonde would eventually put it into practice, and it would seem that he has slowly started to hatch a plan for his challenge. Hayato Yamagata, Rion Ohira, Tendao Satori and 3 plus others group chat. Anyone up for a drink later? Uh, what's with the sudden invitation Semisimi? You usually never organize these types of things smirking face. Shut up Tendao. I'm down for it semi where though. Remember that bar that I play sometimes? Oh that bar? Sure I mean I don't really have anything planned. I don't mind it gives me an excuse to visit Teichi while he's working smirking face. Neutral face. You better not distract me while I'm working Hayato-san. Oh right the last time Yamagata-san visited he wouldn't stop flirting with you skull. Yeah and that got me in trouble with my boss telling me I was slacking off. Not my fault you looked cute in your uniform face blowing a kiss. You go get a room you too. Of course the salt shaker strikes again. Shirabu. Are you up for drinks tonight? Can't sadly. As much as I want to drink my problems away I have a lot of patience to handle. You can't get off your shift early? No. Oh how about we just send you a drink? You want me to get drunk while I'm handling patience? Wouldn't be the first time right? Shut up. Anyways you guys be careful I swear if I see one of you in the emergency room later it's on site. It was one time. Technically it was two but whatever. Wait, what happened? Yamagata and Semi-san got drunk one time and thought it was a good idea to ride a shopping cart down a slope. They ran over someone's garden gnome and hit a tree skull. They were lucky the owner did not press charges against them. Hey it happened in the past, can we not bring it up again? Exactly. And besides we're not doing anything stupid this time around. Teichi, I'll keep an eye on them don't worry. I have to get ready for my shift you'll have fun I guess. Don't try to push yourself too hard. Alright dad. I. Shirabu Kenjiro is a flying. As much as I would love to stick around I have a flight to get ready for. Where are you going? To Akatoshi kun's da? Tendo asked me if he could stay for a while since he's on vacation. Oh. Smirking face. Make sure you guys wear protection. Yamagata kun smiling face. Oh you done fucked up I'm leaving y'all by. Me too. You're on your own bitch. Teichi Kuanashi, Rion Ohira, Semi Ito and Goshiki Tsutomu are offline. Shit. 8.04 PM. Yo Semi what's up? How was Tendo? I don't wanna talk about it. He threatened you, did he? I don't normally get scared of his threats but that bitch can do anything even if he's not here. Can attest to that. He once threatened him that he'll put bed bugs in his room for posting that embarrassing photo of him online. The next thing Hayato knew there were bed bugs crawling around his room. And fucking Tenda was already in Paris when he told me that shit. Tenda san just texted he said I know you're talking about me behind my back your magata kun then he sent a smiley face. Do you see what I mean? Yep that's not surprising. Are you playing with your band tonight? Nah no, it'll probably just be me. Everyone had things to do so yeah. We'll make sure to take a video and send it to Shirabu-san then. Don't you fucking dare. Eh he no promises. Before the former setter could utter another rebuttal the owner of the establishment called for Semi, telling him to get ready for his performance after which they then proceeded to greet the incoming guests. The former setter complied and eventually started setting up his area. He then took a deep breath before he started strumming his guitar and performed his first song of the night. The night progressed until the final song was already coming to a close. As he strummed the last chord of the song's progression the musician immediately thanked everyone for coming tonight and was greeted by an applause from the crowd. Most of the noise coming from his peers from the Shiratoris or a volleyball club. Man if Shirabu were here he'd probably be as red as a tomato when you sang the song you wrote for him back then. Wait, you wrote a song for him? Ai Hayato. What? It's not like Shirabu's here listening? 
The musician sighed before nervously chuckling at Goshiki, the latter giving him a very curious look which pressured the musician to answer him. Yeah, I did. Here's your drink. Thanks handsome smirking face. I'm leaving. Oof. Anyways, did you ever sing that song to Shirabu-san? Yeah. The musician smiled sadly, similar to how his face looked like when he sang the song on stage earlier. Goshiki, who was able to notice this change in tone immediately tried to stir the topic away and change it into a more comfortable one for his senpai. Do you want a drink Semi-san? Dart. Yeah. Yo Teichi someone here needs a drink. On it. Thanks beautiful smirking face. I. I wouldn't be surprised if Teichi reported you for harassment. How is calling him hot harassment? S shut up Hayato-san. I'm just speaking the truth. Here's your drink Semi-san I'll be at the break room if you need me. The bartender then left his peers with his head looking down at the floor in an attempt to hide his flustered expression. His co-worker who was initially worried at his demeanor immediately caught on and smirked at Teichi which then caused the former middle blocker to make a beeline for the break room. You can't keep running away from your emotions Teichi-kun. His co-worker said through the break room's closed door whilst chuckling. Shut up Iketaru. It wasn't long before semi Ito would soon be slightly intoxicated with the amount of alcohol he had. Though the former setter was still slightly aware of his surroundings and the people he was talking to, the effect of the alcohol circulating in his body would become challenging for him to keep his unbothered facade. The conversation between his peers covered a lot of things. They'd talk about what they've been doing with their lives and what happened to them after they had left Shiratorizora. It was as if the volleyball club had their own little reunion through drinks. However as the night progressed it wasn't long until a certain topic was brought up that only Semi could talk about if he was half drunk. And that was his relationship with Shirabu Kenjiro. The former setter would be lying if he said that he's already moved on from their past relationship. It was obvious from the way Semi looked as he was singing the song he had written for Shirabu and though he would never talk about the former setter when he was sober, drunk Semi had different plans. It felt like a part of him wanted to let out his feelings about the situation but something was holding him down. This however would no longer hold him down in his drunken state, and thus the topic revolving around the two former setters was finally brought on the table. What the ash blonde did not anticipate though was him accidentally drunk dialing Shirabu without noticing it immediately. Calling, Shirabu Kenjiro. Ita, is there something you need? The former setter asked but was met with no response. He however could hear Semi's voice as he spoke from a small distance, after which he also heard different voices in the background with most of them sounding very familiar to the doctor. He contemplated turning the call off as he figured that this was probably just a misdeal from Semi but decided against it and listened to their conversation a little longer. Dude you seriously got to step up your game with Shirabu. We broke up years ago okay? Why are you guys so keen on getting us back together? Oh come on Semi-san don't act like you don't have feelings for him. I don't okay. We broke up and that was the end of our chapter. He's better off with someone who'll treat him right and who his parents will approve of. You never know. Maybe his parents' judgment about you changed? PFT are you hearing yourself right now Rion Kun? His father never liked me to begin with calling me an unambitious person because I wanted to become a musician. And Shirabu-san's mother? She didn't like me at first but I guess she kinda mellowed down a bit when she saw how dedicated I was to Shirabu. But I guess that wasn't strong enough to keep our relationship alive. I don't blame him for leaving though. The former setter said in an attempt to rationalize their breakup. His other members only listened to what he had to say about the topic. In fact I think I blame myself for coming into his life. Maybe if I didn't try to date him back then he wouldn't have a strained relationship with his father. And maybe then I also wouldn't be hurting. Ah uh, why am I crying? This is supposed to be in the past I should have moved on already. Shirabu, who was on the other end of the line, had heard the choked sob Semi made which broke the former setter's heart. I'm sorry Ita-kun. He whispered to the phone before he ended the call. The former setter then took a deep breath, wiped the tears that spilled from his eyes and tried his best to keep everything together. I have patience to attend to her. This can wait. Ashi 10. Wakatoshi-kun. The former middle blocker said excitedly as he knocked on a Shijima's door, and after a few moments was then opened by a Shijima who looked as expressionless as ever. Normally Tenda wouldn't be bothered by this as he was used to a Shijima having no variety in his facial expressions and only sporting his signature stoic look. However this time around it would seem that Tenda was caught off guard by the outfit a Shijima was wearing. Whoa what the when I told you to get ready I didn't mean wear a suit. You told me to dress nicely. Well yeah but. But what? Tendao could no longer think of what to say as his eyes were too focused on what Ashijima was wearing. Stunned by how his former captain looked he couldn't help but stare at his sculpted figure. His eyes darted from his legs into his slightly exposed chest due to his undershirt being slightly unbuttoned. Tendao, are you okay? H ha, what? You spaced out, was the flight too much for you? Maybe we can just go another time. You're staying here for two weeks we got plenty of time to go through with your plan. W wait what? No no it's nothing I was just, you know, stunned at your um, outfit. Yeah that's it ha ha. I just thought that you looked really good in that suit. So don't take it off. We're going through with your plans Wakatoshi-kun. Are you sure? Yeah of course just let me get my bags inside and I'll get ready. Here let me help you. I'm ready. The former middle blocker yelled throughout the hall. A Shijima who was sitting peacefully on his sofa while watching previous volleyball match recordings from his team suddenly turned his attention towards Tenda who was now standing behind his sofa. How do I look? You look handsome. Eh? Hey. 
Wakatoshi-kun, are you sure your eyesight is fine? Yes it is perfectly fine my doctor said so during my checkup. That's not what I. You know what how about we just get out and have fun. Of course let's go tender. Ha Didn't know you had an eye for such bars Wakatoshi-kun. Smirking face. My teammates took me here recently and I thought it would be a perfect place for us to catch up. Well I'm not complaining at all. The former middle blocker smiled at the stoic ace before asking a Shijima to sit down beside him. Do you want me to buy you a drink? I wouldn't be opposed to it Wakatoshi-kun. Wakatoshi-kun. The two gentlemen promptly turned towards the voice calling a Shijima and revealed a girl who looked very fond of a Shijima as she walked towards the ace and smiled whilst she placed her hand on Wakatoshi's chest. Tenda who had seen everything unfold couldn't help but feel annoyed at the action. However he tried to contain himself and forced a fake smile. And who is this person you're talking to Wakatoshi? This is my best friend Tenda he's a former teammate of mine and one of the most feared middle blockers during my high school years. Ah ha ha I mean I don't doubt them. With a face like that it could probably scare someone. The girl chuckled as she uttered those words from her mouth and non-verbally tried to encourage a Shijima to laugh with her however the ace only looked at her confusingly making the conversation even more awkward than when it started. Tenda, who was already annoyed from the beginning couldn't help but feel even more annoyed at the backhanded comment and subconsciously started to shake his leg. I can't cause a scene here. He told himself before forcing another smile at the woman who was dangerously close to Wakatoshi. Come on Wakatoshi I wanna introduce you to some people that I met and maybe show you something too. I have to decline I'm sorry I have Tenda here to accompany me. Oh come on it'll be for just a few minutes and I'll bring you back to him. I'm really sorry but I... Wakatoshi-kun it's fine I can handle a few minutes alone don't worry about it. See, even your friend agrees. But I brought you here to hang out with me. I don't think it's right if I just leave you to yourself you know. Your friend said it'll only take a few minutes it's fine I know my way around a bar. Ashijima hesitated however Tendao gave him a reassuring look before finally giving in to the offer. I'll be right back I promise. I know haha don't take too long though or else I'll drink what you ordered. The two then left the former middle blocker alone as he watched Ashijima go on the other side of the bar where he started to shake hands with the people he was introduced to. Tendao sighed before turning his back and focused on his drink alone. What's a handsome man like you doing alone in this bar? Tendao suddenly whipped his head towards the voice Klosabi, before landing his eyes on a handsome and charismatic young man. Tendao was confused whether he was talking to him or to the woman sitting right beside him. Your first time here? Hey are you talking to me? That I am and I must say you look really handsome tonight. Ah he I'm really not. Of course you are just look at how you carry yourself with that outfit. Very exquisite taste if you ask me. Haha <laughs> now you're just making stuff up. I really am not my good so you really do look handsome tonight. Can I buy you a drink? I already have one here don't worry about it he. The handsome man proceeded to do small talk with Tenda which the former middle blocker enjoyed. A Shijima who was constantly looking behind him to see how Tenda was doing felt surprised when he saw that he was conversing with another person. The ace couldn't explain it but there was a weird feeling rising from him. Almost as if he was starting to feel jealous. However, before he could even slip away from the conversation, the girl who had asked him to come over for a while tugged at his hand and begged him to stay for a few more minutes. Though it was against Ashijima's wishes he decided to stay for a little longer as he thought that Tenda was still occupied with someone else. Ah fuck I dropped my glasses. The guy said as he suddenly stood up and tried to find it from the floor. Can you not see without your glasses? Ah he why yeah kinda embarrassing to ask you this but could you help me find them? Oh yeah sure hold on I think it fell down here. The former middle blocker was able to immediately locate the fallen Iwa and gave it to its rightful owner. The man who had been entertaining Tenda thanked him profusely as they both sat down and drank their beverages once more. Tenda would be lying to himself if he said that the man in front of him didn't have charisma. He was easily hooked to how he would tell his stories and Tenda couldn't help but feel interested in everything he had to say. However, it would seem that with each passing minute his surroundings would slowly start to go black. Did he drink too much? Or was the alcohol too strong for him? Why was he getting sleepy all of a sudden? Horizontal ellipsis. Uhhe excuse me yes sir? What do you want? Can I help you? Are you friends with the guy with the red hair? Yes. Why? There was a guy that was talking to him earlier and I think he placed a roofie on his drink. The bartender wasn't around when it happened and I was too scared to confront him directly so I asked around if someone knew him. Ashijima's eyes grew wide at the revelation and immediately asked where Tenda was, the feeling of worry immediately filling his mind. They just got out of the bar seconds ago he was limping a lot though. Before the girl could even finish her sentence the ace immediately booked it and ran straight out of the bar and into the sidewalk where he saw a nearly unconscious Tenda being slowly guided to the perpetrator's vehicle. Without wasting any second Ashijima immediately ran towards the guy in record time before landing a clean punch to the perpetrator's jaw causing both him and the former middle blocker to fall down. The guy who Tenda was talking to earlier was now on the parking lot floor and unconscious. He then proceeded to cradle Tendao's unconscious body towards him and carried him away from him. Ashijima thought about going for a second strike but decided against it and immediately took Tendao to a safe place after which he alerted bar security on what had happened before riding a cab to the nearest hospital. The ace couldn't help but feel guilty for leaving Tendao alone during the ride as he tried to support his head. Had he stood his ground he probably would have been able to keep the former middle blocker safe from harm. But there was nothing he could do now and he could only hope that the fall didn't harm him too much. Kuro Ken. Kenma's Mansion. 7.37pm. 
To say that the party was a success was an understatement. It was clear that every single one of them enjoyed the night. Effectively putting their worries aside for now. Kenma, who had been the host of the party, decided to let everyone enjoy the place amongst themselves after dinner. However it would seem that the Nakoma Volleyball Club had different plans up their sleeves and decided to play a game of beach volleyball instead which of course got everyone riled up for the game. Alright so how should we play this game? There's 10 of us so maybe 5 players each team? Make that 9 sorry guys but that's too much physical activity for me you can just make me do the scores instead. Hi Anma we're supposed to be enjoying the party. I am though. I'm going to enjoy seeing you get hit by spikes from your cow haze. PSH as if are you talking about Lev? Police. Hey I've gotten better. Yeah you may have but you're not better than me. And too. Nah stop Captain pretty boy we know no ace is better than me. Oh yeah I'll make you eat your words Yamamoto-san. We haven't even started but these two are already getting fired up. Wait. Lev don't tell me you're playing wearing that. Oh right shit hold on let me go to my room real quick and change. The beanpole immediately ran from the group and booked it straight inside the house with the Nakoma volleyball team laughing at the way the former middle blocker ran. Don't take too long or else we'll play without you. I won't. Right since there's 9 players one team is going to have 5 the other one is going to have 4. Wouldn't you guys agree that Yakusan should be placed in the 4 man team? Since he's a professional volleyball player and all. Shibayama kun is also a professional, you know. Tora kun too. I mean to be fair Yakusan is the only one here who's playing for the Japan national team though that puts him at a higher level than Yamamoto-san and Yuki-kun. No offense by the way. None taken. Fine I can't deny the facts but I swear someday I'll be able to play in the Olympics. I'm back. What did I miss? Everyone's trying to figure out how to divide the team seeing as how we have three professional players. To be honest I kinda wanna go against Yakusan. He's been my mentor on how to be a good libero during high school I think it's time to show him what I've learned. Hey me too. I wanna show Yakusan what I'm made of as well. Alright alright settle down children. Why don't we ask the brains of the Nakoma VBC for their input? Um? Well, seeing as how Yakusan is up against two professional players I think it'd only be fair if you placed five members in his group instead of what Anuoka Kun was suggesting. Or, you could help us with this crisis by just joining the game. Come on Kenma-san just one game face with big pleading eyes. Neutral face. Alright fine but only if Lev stops making that stupid face. What face? Face with big pleading eyes. Dude. Alright alright I'll stop. Alright so I guess it's Yamamoto, Kenma, Lev, Shibayama and Anuoka versus me, Yaku, Kai, Toshiro and Fukunaga. Did I cover everyone? Yeah. Wait hold on there should be a punishment for the losing team. You know make the stakes a little higher smirking face. What are you up to now Kuro? Nothing. I'm just saying that the losing team has to drink a certain amount of shots of this alcoholic drink that I found. I mean that was supposed to be for later but okay fine whatever I win either way. UHH. I drink alcohol a lot when I'm stressed that Kuro kinda gave up trying to tell me it's bad for my health. Alright alright enough chit chat let's do this thing. Yaku-san. I'll show you how much I've improved all this years. Me too. Bring it on you too. The match ended with Yaku's team taking victory. The game had lasted much longer than expected as both teams gave it their all. Kuru, who wasn't expecting Kenma to go all out, was very surprised by him considering how he was so against playing earlier. I see you enjoyed playing the game a lot that you forgot you didn't wanna play earlier smirking face. Shut up I did not. Did too. Did not. Did too. That was a nice match Kenma-san. I'm surprised you were still able to control the game with your setting skills. Doesn't matter to Shiro-kun we still lost. That you did which means you and your team need to drink. Alright losers. Ready your shot glasses it's time to get drunk. With that the losing team immediately drank their respective shots with each member of the team giving different reactions which got the winning team laughing at the faces they made. Fuck that's strong. Yeah well there's more where that came from man. Who wants to go next? Kenma Kozum fully believed he would be able to tank the effects of the alcohol he drank earlier. However, it would seem that the opposite was currently happening to the former setter. With the Nakoma Volleyball Club members in their own groups, the former setter would slowly find his tipsy self walking towards a lone figure sitting by the beach's shore. You getting tired Kenkan? The pudding head slowly nodded, his face sporting a red tint and a flushed expression. Though he wouldn't admit it, he may have consumed a bit more alcohol than he intended to. Want me to take you back to your room? No. Alright but let me know if you need to crash okay? I'll be here. Why are you all alone here? I asked Lev to keep Yakin company. He said he's planning on making a move on him tonight so yeah. Kenma couldn't fully understand what Kiru was saying. Could it be because he's actually starting to get tired? Or because of the alcohol? Or maybe both? However there was also one thing he couldn't understand. Why was Kiru slowly starting to look hot? Kenma tried racking his brain for answers. He had seen Kiru without his shirt on many times and not one time had he felt this foreign feeling. But why now? Why this time of all times? Kenkan? You're looking like you're about to fall asleep any second. I don't get it. Kenma said as his expression changed to his signature pout, which subconsciously made Kiru smile. Don't get what? When did you start getting hot? Kiru's eyes widened at what Kenma said before chuckling nervously. Was he hearing things? Or did he just hear Kenma call him hot? Ah he Kenkan are you sure this is not just the alcohol speaking? No it's just. Back then you looked like a stickman with abs and noodle arms. But now you glowed up and looked hot. It's not fair. 
I mean, when you're born with innate hotness it will eventually show smirking face. Kenma's pout grew bigger and Kiru couldn't help but chuckle at the expression he was showing him. It took him almost all of his strength to resist pinching his already red cheeks. It's not fair. Why you? Hick were all noodly hick arms back then. And now you're hick hot. Ken can I think it's time I carry you back to your room he why you're already saying nonsense. I am not. You are too. I'm not. You are. The two were then engulfed in awkward silence. The rooster head tried his best to hide the growing blush on his cheeks. After what seemed like an eternity to Kiru the pudding head eventually sighed and spoke up. It's not hick fair Kuro why did you become hot? He can can seriously a why you s sure why you're t thinking straight? Now hick I can't hick stop thinking hick about it. Kenma said tiredly as he fought to try and formulate words from his mouth. Not long after the setter found himself resting his head on Kiru's lap which intensified the already red face Kiru had. T thinking about. Before the pudding head could even finish his sentence the setter had already fallen asleep on Kiru's lap. The rooster head who was still in shock of the revelation couldn't move and decided to sit still until he could figure something out. Lev Yaku. Following their team's defeat from their little volleyball game with the other members of the club, Lev Haber would slowly find himself drinking as part of their punishment. Though he does claim that he's a seasoned veteran in handling the effects of alcohol on him, it would seem that what he was exhibiting right now was the opposite of his claim. Lev you okay man? You've been staring at the water for quite some time now. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm perfectly finny. Yep he's drunk. I'm gonna go and get water for him. Guys hick did you know that one hick of the photographer's hick taught me a really cool pose? Let me show you. The former middle blocker suddenly stood up from where he was seated and with wobbly movement slowly made his way in front of the crowd. Yaku, who had been observing Lev's movements couldn't help but feel worried of the possibility that he may hurt himself. Lev be careful. You're going to hurt yourself. Alright here goes. The beanpole immediately put his model face on and stroke a pose. At least he tried to. In his head he imagined himself looking like what he does during his photoshoots. However, in reality, his pose was all over the place. Paired with the goofy face he was making due to the alcohol. It wasn't long before everyone in the crowd started laughing at how silly Lev was. Before Lev could even strike his second pose, the beanpole found himself losing balance and immediately fell into the sand face first with his butt still on the air. This caused his friends to laugh even harder than before including Yaku who tried to hold back his laugh but eventually failed at it. Bahahaha Lev are you okay? Look at me I'm making a snow angel. Hi. Is he okay? Alright it's time for you to get up you're going to bed. The libero then stood from his seat and walked towards the former middle blocker who was clearly struggling to get back up. Yaku realized that it was almost impossible for him to assist Lev back into the mansion without the threat of Lev crashing on top of him. Kai help me out here. On it. The two then picked Lev up from the ground and supported him side to side. However it didn't take long for the three of them to come crashing down to the ground. Ha 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 fuck Yaku-san are you alright? I'm back with Lev's water and... Why are our senpais and Lev on the ground? You got ramen? Yeah. Got hungry on the way and decided to cook some. You know I'm kind of in the mood to eat some ramen I'm going in by y'all. Who are me too? The two then took their leave and made their way towards the house with the remaining members following closely behind leaving Yaku. Kai and Lev still struggling to assist the drunken beanpole. Hey, we could use some help here. Lev seriously? You have your own bed. The two were eventually able to reach their respective rooms. Thanks to the delayed help of their cowhays however it would seem that the challenge to keep Lev from doing more dumb shit was only getting started for Yaku. And it would seem that his patience was already wearing thin. To make matters worse, Lev was trying to sleep on Yaku's lap which did not fail in flustering the libero. Don't wanna hick. Yaku-san's lap is more comfortable to sleep on. I. The libero was too stunned to speak, his face starting to get redder by the second tried his best to control the weird feelings that was currently invading his mind. I I meant not exactly a pillow you know. It's too hot hick I wanna take a bath. T then G go do that. The B bathroom's right there. The older pointed towards the door of the bathroom. Lev whose face was still on Yaku's lap slowly lifted his head and looked at Yaku before putting his arms up in the air. The older not knowing what to do gave him a confused look. What are you doing? Take my shirt off please. H ha. Wyw would why you want me to de-do that? I don't know how to face with big pleading eyes. Please face with big pleading eyes. The libero didn't know what to do. Lev was looking at him with pleading eyes that he really found endearing. Though he wouldn't admit that. The thought of taking Lev's shirt off flustered him so much that he could feel the heat from his cheeks radiating. Face with big pleading eyes. F fine B but M make sure you don't hurt yourself W when you take a bath. With that, the libero cautiously slipped Lev's shirt off of him revealing a toned torso which Yaku definitely did not stare at a little too much. The younger who had felt the fabric off of him slowly stood up before walking slowly towards the bathroom and doing his business. Horizontal ellipsis. After what felt like a long time, the door to the bathroom finally opened revealing Lev in his pajamas without a shirt on. Yaku, who was not prepared for such a view couldn't help but stare and before he could realize what he was doing he then felt his bed sink lower than before. Lev this isn't your bed. I wanna. Before he could even finish his sentence the former middle blocker fell asleep. Yaku who was still on his phone reading couldn't help but feel a little irritated but decided to stand up and move to Lev's bed instead of forcing him to get out. 
However, before he could even get up he immediately felt a large hand stop him before seeing Lev strategically putting his head on Yaku's lap effectively preventing him from moving out of the bed. So, comfortable. Oh my god.